One Wheel GT. By now, we're pretty familiar with it. It's been out for a few years and was the fastest, most powerful one wheel we've ever built. Oh, shit. Until. Our newest flagship model, the One Wheel GT S Series, has officially hit the market and it's the best riding experience money can buy. Or is it? Okay, the One Wheel GT S Series, it's here. But what does this mean for you? You might even be thinking, it can't be better than a GT. Should I buy this? Is it really worth upgrading? I've never owned a GT S Series, be right for me. Is it right? Should I eat more goldfish? Okay, so you got questions and I got answers. Let's get to it. Okay. What's the main difference between the GT and the GTS series? They kind of look similar, but the main difference really comes down to the internals. When the GT was first introduced, it had a brand new motor, battery, controller, BMS, equating to a 63 volt system. Okay, as I was editing this, I realized I got that stat wrong. The GT actually has a 75 volt system. My bad. Okay, back to the video. Which, at the time, was impressive. At speed, the GT has 50% more torque available than the XR. And then we introduce the S-Series, which also has a brand new battery, motor, controller, BMS, power stage, equating to a 113 volt system. This means the S-Series has 50% more torque at speed than the GT and 100% more torque at speed than the XR. The next question is, how does all this torque and voltage come into play when you're riding? Well. Well, like all one wheels and self-balancing vehicles, there's a limit to how much torque is available to keep you balanced while you're riding. One of the ways we can kind of break this down is through a power band graph. Here you will see both the XR and the GT. This is an estimate to show you how much torque is available at speed while you're riding. And then we can implement the GT S series. And you can see pretty quickly just how drastic the difference is between the XR to the GT to the GTS series. Graphs are nice and all, but the amount of torque headroom you have directly translates to confidence while riding. And that's not an understatement. For me personally, this is the biggest game-changing element to this board. And you can ask a lot of the S series, and it will respond. This also means that pushback and the haptic buzz come in later on the S-Series than it does in all of our previous models. Okay, voltage, power, torque, Whew. dang. That's a lot of new technology in there. But what else is new? Well, the S-Series also comes with our new low boy foot pads. We've decreased the ride height by five millimeters. It's the lowest in the center and then slowly builds. So there's still a little bit of concave in there to help keep your foot planted and in control. The S-Series comes pre-installed with a brand new performance treaded tire, which has become a favorite amongst a lot of our riders and was the favored tire at this year's 2023 Race for the Rail Championship. The GT S-Series is also two pounds lighter than the GT. And if you like performance, then you know that every pound counts. This outlet is at such a weird height. The GT S-Series also charges in 150 minutes compared to the GT's 200 minutes. I mean, it also is blue, which is pretty cool. So now you know the main differences between the GT and the GTS series. But why make a new board in the first place? I mean, the GT is already very capable. Even now with custom shaping and the new performance tire, the GT has actually never been better. What it all bottles down to is curiosity. We were curious what a board would look and feel like if it was tailor-made for racing. Because racing breeds performance. If you were to think about Formula One, NASCAR, or MotoGP, all these race sports push engineering to the next level. But you can't buy a race-ready vehicle, can you? Well, no, but you can get pretty close. Take the Yamaha R6, for example. This is a street legal motorcycle that is race ready. All you have to do is eliminate the headlights, turn signals, take off the mirrors, and you have award-winning performance at your fingertips. So, while we hunt for all this performance in the GTS series, we have to be sacrificing something, don't we? Yeah, you do, but just a little bit. The GT does have a whopping 32 miles of range. 6%, 27.4 miles. Woo! Which is a pretty long ride. With the S-Series, you'll get up to 24 miles of range. And I say up to because the uphill performance is so great. You might push uphills faster than you ever have before. And given the performance increase, I'd say that's a worthy trade-off. So the first versions of this board didn't really have the consumer in mind. It was how can we make the best board possible for racing. And then we wrote it. And the conversation quickly changed from this is only for racers to 
everybody needs to ride this board. So after months of testing, adding in new components, bringing in pro riders, we have the GTS series, a new one wheel that sets the performance standard. But does everybody need performance? I feel like I'm in Blue's Clues, but the chair is yellow. Okay, anyway, no, not everybody needs performance. But why else do people drive Lamborghinis and Porsches and Ferraris on the same streets you might drive a Honda Corolla? No offense to Corollas, they're fantastic, reliable cars. In fact, our COO drives one. They do it because it's exciting, it's fun, it brings new life to what some might consider to be mundane. But again, not everybody needs performance. Because if you've never experienced the joys and excitement of riding a one wheel, you don't really have much to compare the GTS series to. That's not to say you shouldn't get one, but I think to really appreciate what the S series brings to the table, it helps to have some previous one wheel experience. If, however, you're an experienced one wheel rider or an avid trail user, well, you're in for a treat. Heck, maybe you're even still on the XR. Well, this might be your time to upgrade. Because when I ride the GT and others on the S series, it's kind of like, Let's go get our skates! <laughs> Wait for me, I got little legs! <laughs> yeah, you get left in the dust. Okay, okay, specs, comparisons, that's all cool and all. But how does the S series ride? How does it feel? It's kind of like, <laughs> Yeah, it's a ride. Okay, this sounds great and all. But how much does the GT S series cost? Well, the board comes in at $3,200. $3,200 for basically an upgraded GT? That seems ridiculous, I can't afford that. Maybe you shouldn't buy the new iPhone every year. But titanium. How much was that new gravel bike? You don't wanna know. How about that new car? What? I financed it. Great, you can finance one wheels too, seriously. It's a great option if that's something you're into. But finally, if you wanna crunch the numbers, let's get into a cost comparative breakdown between the GT and the GTS series. If you took the GT and you put on the new low boy foot pads, the performance tire, you could even add in the imported Japanese bearings that also come stock on the GTS series. You're looking around $2,795. So the difference between a fully upgraded GT and the S series equates to about $400. So in a way, a few hundred dollars means all the difference between an insane level of performance, new premium parts, and the best one wheel on the market. I'll leave it up to you if you think that's worth it. All in all, the GTS series is the next level of board performance. If you want the best of the best, maybe you're an experienced rider looking to upgrade. It's kind of hard to go wrong with the GTS series. I can't wait to see people out there shredding this board. It's been an absolute journey to film it and to see it all come together. As always, take it easy, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.